to Shred Guitar in the 80s. Today's going to be a fun day. I'm going to talk about the right hand picking technique of one of my favorite guitar players of all time and that's the amazing Vinnie Moore. Um, when I first heard Vinnie in the 80s I was just totally blown away by his picking. Um, having been an Yngwie fan when I heard Vinnie it was like the natural extension of what I heard Yngwie doing. Um, the amazing thing is they did everything totally different. Uh, Vinnie was more of an alternate picker um, he tended to sweep when he did arpeggios, but when he played fast single note lines, it would come more from the elbow. Where Ingve would kind of use more of a rotational mechanic. Um, the elbow mechanic is something that I do also, and it happened really naturally. And it happened around the same time I heard Vinnie Moore play, or maybe slightly before. I noticed over the years the elbow technique tends to be very controversial. And there's a lot of myths to it and all sorts of internet chatter about, you know, it's the wrong way to pick. And I noticed everyone nowadays kind of picks the same. They kind of have like an angle in their pick and they're using like that kind of motion, either like the Paul Gilbert or Yngwie are the two main ones I see. I don't see a lot of the old Vinnie Moore stuff. And back in the 80s, there was like two ways to pick with your elbow or wrist. We didn't know all these different motions. We just, either you picked with your elbow or you picked from the wrist. Um, and I was definitely an elbow picker. Um, I was listening to tons of Ingve with Alcatraz and the first Rising Force album, trying to play all those lines, all the... Um... Let me turn up here. When I heard Ingve play those amazing alternate pick lines on one string, I was just blown away. And there's really cool turnaround licks. I just, I had to get that sort of sound. And at the time, I had no idea how Ingve was doing it. Um, and originally, I talked about this a lot. I kind of held the pick and pick like that. So for like a year or months, I don't know, almost a year, I was trying to play those Ingve lines like that. Well, it didn't really work out too well. It worked great for my medium tempo speed but not at all for my fast speed. One day I just, I went from holding the pick like this to putting my fingers down because I saw Ingve have his fingers on the body of the guitar in a Guitar World magazine back in about 1985, 86. And once I did that, I just moved the pick as fast as I could. Well, I went from kind of a wrist thing to more of an elbow thing because my hand was kind of locked in back like that. And I could pick really fast and when I tried to do the Ingve lick, it was there because my left hand was already there. I just needed to speed with my right hand. And it was amazing. Once I found that motion, um, more of an elbow mechanic, I could play all these fast lines that I've been trying to play that were very much in the style of Ingve Malmsteen. Um, and then a little later, I heard Aldi Miola. And the combination of those two, I just sat around trying to pick lines. And I alternately picked everything. At the time, I didn't know Ingve was using more of an economy approach or sweep picking approach to crossing the strings when he was ascending. And some of those lines, like the two string turnaround lines that Ingve did back then, are really hard to pick alternate picking, but I would sit for hours trying to alternate pick that stuff. And the next two guys that really blew my mind picking wise that I really wanted to play like was Tony McAlpine and Vinnie Moore. And I was aware of Vinnie Moore because I had read about him in Guitar Player Magazine Spotlight column. And Mike Farney really praised Vinnie's playing, said he's going to be one of the next great guitar heroes. Um, and his influences were right up my alley, what I was into, that and classical influence and stuff. And the first time I heard Vinnie was on the Flexi Disc that used to come in Guitar Player Magazine. And when I put that on, dropped the needle down in that, it was everything I wanted to hear. 
it was so clean and articulate. The picking was just amazing. Um, I loved his tone on that. You could hear kind of the Yngwie influence, the neoclassical influence, but I heard those Di Miola lines also. And his lines were very much more out Di Miola. Some of the lines that he played back then were just pure Di Miola lines, kind of he took and ran with and made his own. Um, they weren't really that similar to Ingve. A couple lines were, but in general, they were very much more in the alternate pick out Di Miola style. So I spent hours just devouring the Mind's Eye album, trying to learn every single note, every single riff. I can't tell you how much I listened to this album along with Edge of Insanity back in the day and Alcatraz and Rising Force. Those were like my big albums in Chastain. Um, but this album, I just tried to learn note for note. I would sit down and just try to learn those lines the best I could. Um, just an amazing album and a super huge influence on me. Um, can't say enough about this record. It really holds a special place in my heart. I remember going into the music store in the summer of 87 to pick up the new Guitar World magazine. I just, I looked forward to all the guitar magazines so much. And in that issue that I picked up, it had this amazing interview with Vinny. Um, this was Vinny's first national interview in a guitar magazine. They called him Young Thunder back then. Um, and I remember looking at the photos, wondering how he picked, you know, what, looking how he held his pick, that kind of thing. I would just read the articles in the guitar magazines of my favorite players over and over and over and just study all the photographs. And in this interview that Vinny gave, there's a really cool photograph where you can see this wrist is kind of tilted back and locked like that. Well, I kind of noticed I did that too um, in some photographs when my band was playing. And I got to thinking, that's kind of interesting. It looked a lot different than Ingve, And I had no idea what mechanic he was using, but I did notice at the time that his wrist was kind of locked like mine. So fast forward a few months after that interview, it was amazing. Vinnie Moore came to Akron, Ohio, and I got to see a clinic there in the fall of 87. And it was just life altering. It was just amazing seeing Vinnie play these songs from the Mind's Eye album right there in person in front of me. It was godlike, it was incredible. And I remember my buddy I went with looking over to me and saying, he picks with his arm like you do. And I've told this story before, but I wasn't really aware that I was using my elbow at the time. I mean, maybe sorta, but I wasn't really concentrating on it. And when I was watching Vinny, he was just full on elbow. He would tilt his hand back, lock the wrist. And it did sort of look like my, my picking hand. I remember going home that night in the mirror, picking and looking and thinking, wow, it's sort of similar. And the cool thing was a buddy of mine actually made me a copy of the Vinnie Moore Hot Licks video, my favorite instructional video of all time. I'm actually gonna break down some licks from that intro solo that he does sometime here soon. And it was just amazing um, to see him play on my TV set using that full elbow mechanic. And I really studied it like crazy and tweaked my mechanics slightly watching his. I was really doing a very similar thing. The only thing I was doing that was a little different than Vinny was I tended to glide a little more on these fingers where Vinny was a little more on his little finger. So I kind of switched to the little finger. So I thought it'd be fun today to break down the mechanics like I just talked about a little bit there and show you what Vinny was doing. And what Vinny does is he picks from the elbow, but he takes this part of his arm and he would rest it on the guitar like this and kind of cock his arm back this way and kind of lock his wrist by gliding on his little finger. The cool thing was he actually talked about this in the Guitar School Magazine's Neoclassical issue from 1989, thing being on the cover, and it covered Ingve, Vinnie Moore, and Paul Gilbert. I mean, how amazing is that? To actually walk into to the newsstand and pick up that issue. I mean, it was great times back then. Um, he talks about his picking mechanic and how he glided on his little finger. And what he says here, he says for muting and slower playing, he finds that his wrist takes control. But for the faster lines, the writer said he, it appeared he had a stiff arm approach. And what Vinny said is he anchors the inside of his right forearm on the body of the guitar and keeps his right hand fingers out but slightly bent. And he says when he picks back and forth, he glides on his pinky. And he says when he's playing the higher strings, the ball part of his hand is actually on the lower string. So his hand's cocked back like that and he glides on his little finger like that. And then when he goes to lower strings, it's just free floating. He's not actually touching any of the strings really. 
and he's just gliding on that little finger. And that that was really comfortable for me to do. I mean, that's just sort of how I developed it also. And the cool thing is with the little finger, it's really an ingenious thing. I mean, it's a tool that I use that I'm sure Vinny, this is why he does it also, is that having that point, I could control the depth of the pick. And by gliding on it, just gliding like that, I just can keep my pick at the very tip. I don't worry about the pick dropping to a lower string where I'm using my fast picking with my elbow. It keeps everything really even and it keeps the pick at exactly the same height when you're crossing strings. And it's cool, if you want it to be a little louder, you can just drop the pick down, but you can just glide in that little finger by changing the angle or of your hand, you can lower it or raise it up, um, get dynamics with it, it's pretty amazing. But when you really get cruising, you can kind of keep everything at the same height. right across the strings. I remember they used to have this pick, I think it was called a stimulus pick or stylus pick. That was it, the stylus pick. And it was this weird looking contraption. It had like a ball at the end with a flat thing. So if you went too far, you would catch it on the string, which I, I thought that thing was ridiculous. But I remember buying a couple and trying it. But the cool thing was I kind of didn't need that because of the way my technique is, um, I just use the tip when I play because I glided my little finger. And you could actually press down your little finger and really get control by pressing down while you're gliding, but the pick would still just stay at the very tip. It's really cool. And I think that's one of the keys in terms of elbow technique that Vinny had back then that, that I use also, is kind of using that tool. And if you listen to Vinny's playing, it's really, really even. And I, he was like probably the cleanest guy back then, I would say. And I think a large part of that was because his mechanics allowed him just to play everything really even and just, he didn't drop below the strings at all. It was pretty cool. And another thing when you're using the elbow technique is that you could actually do a, like compound motions and all this. For me, and I noticed when Vinny's playing too, when you're going fast, it's just elbow. Um, there's not a whole lot of other things going on. You're just moving the arm back and forth. And it's really important that when you're moving back and forth, that you actually pick in one direction. So like, it's like a windshield wiper, kind of like that, you know? You don't want to kind of go this way at all. Um, and sometimes you can do that and it will cause strain in your arm. And Vinny was just using inspiration. And the thing is that when you're playing this way, let the motion happen. You don't want to tense up. Um, it's so weird. You know, there's so much chatter on the internet over the years that I've been reading how the elbow technique's wrong, you're gonna wear your elbow out, it's the wrong way to pick. You know, I, there for a while I was like self-conscious because I used my elbow. When I make videos, I thought maybe I should just show my wrist they don't see I use my elbow, it's just stupid. Um, looking back, uh, I shouldn't have been self-conscious because I could play whatever I wanted and I had my hero Vinny Moore playing like that. So that's all I would have to point to and say, well, yeah, what about Vinny Moore? one of the cleanest, best pickers from that era by far, so musical. Um, right there should tell you that the elbow technique was fine. And then his style kind of changed, so everyone kind of said, well, you know, Vinny wore his arm out. But I read in interviews where they asked Vinny that, that question. He said no, he just, his style changed. He just went a different direction. Um, he went to grow as a player and go different directions. And I've, I've watched some recent live videos, and when he plays those older songs, he goes full elbow. The style changed a little bit with the pick, and I noticed that when he's back here, he doesn't anchor his little finger as much. Uh, when he does on the higher string, or glide on his little finger, when he plays the higher strings, he does. But back in the 80s, it was just, it was all that. And initially, you don't have to worry about making real small motions. I think that when you hear people talk about getting tense, the problem is that they're trying to make the motion so small that they're just tensing up to get this like spasmatic picking or whatever they call it. Uh, I don't do that. I just let the motion be big and, and happen on its own. And then as I get faster, it kind of gets more compact, but I'm not squeezing my arm and just trying to get some vibration coming from the muscle or something. I don't do that. Hyper picking, whatever they call. And I don't think Vinny did that either. Um, it's just the motion happened. And a lot of times when I'm going fast, I'm in playing in that style like Vinny, 
which is kind of my main fast picking style, it feels like my arm's floating and it's really relaxed and it's cool. I can just go on forever and it feels great when I'm really locked in. And for me, the key is to get that sound like Vinny is to really start on time. And it's the left hand is for me is 90% of it. Um, making sure my hands even and just allowing both hands to work together and really working on my left hand. Like I talk about getting those motions allowed me to play those lines. Um, but the Vinnie Moore technique is great. I mean, that's my go-to technique, you know? And it was kind of a natural evolution and listening to a lot of Vinnie, watching Vinnie and, and kind of combining what I was doing um, from what Vinnie was doing. I would say I was a large percentage there than I just tweaked it watching Vinnie play. And like Vinnie, I use different techniques with different speed. When I'm playing fast, it's a lot, you know, the elbow technique like we've been talking about. When I play at medium speeds, it's a combination of elbow and I weave out kind of rotational. When I play slower, it's wrist. And when I mute, it's wrist. Um, and I just blend in and out of those, you know, ways of picking without really thinking about it. And it just feels really natural. I let it happen. I let the techniques happen. And I just try to use my ears and get everything to sound like I want it to sound. Um, but it's worked for me for years. And I don't see a lot of people using the elbow like this anymore. And it seems that when I read a lot online that a lot of players that naturally want to use their elbow are trying not to use their elbow. And they're trying to be like Paul Gilbert or whoever's popular and they want to use their wrist because this guy's using their wrist. And they might be able to play everything that guy plays using their elbow, but you know, they're fighting it. So I thought it'd be fun to make this video because I want people to know that it's okay to use your elbow. I've been doing it for 30 some years. And my arm works great, um, you know, I don't have to ice it down when I'm done playing or anything. It's not like I'm pitching, you know, nine innings or anything. And I think the results speak for themselves. Listen to those first couple of Vinnie Moore albums, Mind's Eye and Time Odyssey, or the Vicious Rumors album. There was no one cleaner, as far as I'm concerned. Vinnie was as clean or cleaner than anyone else in that scene, by far. And he used his elbow. So I don't know if the elbow is inherently cleaner or not, but I do think that, you know, gliding on your little finger, keeping the pick the same height, you can really make your lines even. And that's what I want to hear. I want to hear those really even lines, um, really smooth, fluid kind of playing is what I like. And then if I want to hit it harder, use dynamics, I just do it. But I want to be able to play smooth whenever I want. So anyway, I thought it'd be fun to come on and talk about this a little bit. And, you know, let everyone know that, hey, if you're using your elbow and it's comfortable, go for it. If you find a lot of tension in your elbow and you're having problems, then I would analyze two things. One, make sure that your motion's going this way. You don't want to be doing compound movements. And number two is relax your left hand. Make sure your left hand's really relaxed and in and feeling the motions even, like I talk about tons. And if you're really just feeling that motion with the left hand, the right hand just kind of cruises along and it works out great. So anyway, go listen to some Vinny. Um, have fun um, picking. And uh, until next time, thanks a lot for liking and subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you soon.